If the players are corrupt, can you blame Potter? If the players are corrupt, can you blame Graham Potter? It's it's a very simple assessment. The football has improved. It's now all because the football has improved doesn't mean the football is great. It is an improvement. It's faster, it's quicker, one touch, it's much more, there's more life there. If you give gold to a fruit seller, what then is a fruit seller supposed to do? The, the, he sells fruit. The, a fruit seller doesn't know what to do if you give them gold. And at Chelsea, what you're seeing is these players are limited. Havertz, thankfully, you still found a goal. It's finished. Sterling, limited as a football player. Aubameyang loses his confidence. Mounts, basic, very limited as a player. Jo Jorginho doesn't understand the context of moving the ball forward. The only players I can vouch for are Thiago Silva. Yes, I get it. He made a mistake. Kovacic and Rhys James. Those are the only guys I can vouch for. Everyone else, these guys are below standard. They're just not good. <laughs> They're just not good. So, for you tribal fans who like to just prop these guys because they are for Chelsea, good for you. I can take a step back and look at things in a footballing objective sense and say that these players are not good enough. They're not good enough. Mounts, Havertz, Ziyech, Pulisic, Aubameyang, Sterling, they are not good enough. They are decent at best. And decent is not good enough to compete with the very best right now. So, the issue is, did Potter want these guys? Did Potter, was where Potter and Bowley, were they sort of in conversation and in communication before your boy Tuchel was sacked? Because what I assume is these aren't his players. So, if these aren't his players, how do you expect them to fully execute his game plan? You pick players and you buy players who can fit into the footballing philosophy and the game plan you want to execute. <laughs> you know, it doesn't work the other way around. And as I'm looking at these players, I'm like, first touch, ball control, there is no, there's lack of imagination, lack of initiative, nobody can dribble, nobody can beat a man, nobody can go into diagonals and just do something creative or interesting in the final third because the players are just limited as players. <laughs> They're like, there was, there is such a stark contrast from the quality of Ban and the Barca game to this. They drop down in quality from the Ban and Barca game to this Chelsea Salzburg game is, is crazy. For Salzburg, it's an amazing result. It's an amazing result. And, I, and for me, my thing is when you want zero up, you have two choices. Either you get that second goal, but if you're confident of not getting that second goal, which I know Chelsea will not because this team is still this to say what's up, slow the game down. Keep possession. It's too quick. It's too helter-skelter. It's, it's, it's too rapid. When you're 1-0 done and you know you can't get a second goal and you worked hard to get that first goal, quality by Sterling, great goal by Sterling, slow the game down. Keep possession. Tactical fouls. Take this thing out of the game. Or back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And if you're going back and forth, you give the position chance to say, what's up? Long season ahead. Long season ahead, man. Long season ahead, man. Like, so, so please go to drop a like, subscribe for real footballing content on this crazy Chelsea journey. I will talk more on the UCL hangout, man. Long season ahead.